What's up, dudes? Welcome back. Uh, we are doing this podcast. It is called 3XKO. I am joined by Matt McMuscles. Hi, Matt. Hello. And I'm also joined by Justin. Hello. Hello, man. I appreciate you, uh, you know, taking your sweet time away from Final Fantasy VII. What is that? You know? I don't know. It's precious okay. time. It's my precious, precious time. time. <laughs> I, I, I can't even tell you how many times I've been playing that and having the combat and being like, man, Square Enix, you should talk to Arc System Works. You should. Right? You should <laughs> chat with them about your next Dissidia game or something like that. Maybe not Team Ninja this time. How about Arc System Works? They are, you know, they're out there. They're searching for, for IP to work with. But uh, also... So screw max because following him follow, <laughs> following him following a bunch of his editors and everyone posting about final fantasy 7 rebirth made me go i am getting hype for this game and i have not finished remake i never did so uh, i went back and now i'm finishing remake i blasted through 10 chapters in like a real day quick, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, just the residual hype from it. Like, let, let me see if I can, you know, finish. Because it was one of those games where I'm like, this is fun. This is great. Just stopped playing it after the first two hours. So I still don't know why. So that's what I'm doing as well. So and I'm not rebirth, but you know, the, the original, like, yeah. I'm fun. And I did, I did the same thing. I did a blast through right before you know rebirth comes out. Sorry, yeah. fighting game fans that are listening to this. Uh, and <laughs> and it, was, it was actually better. It was actually paced better because a lot of the side content takes you away from the story stuff, and the story is like yeah. on this pace that just goes boom. We want to get you through this shit. So I actually mm -hmm. think what you're doing is probably the best. And. There's no reason to grind or anything like that. There's not really. So you just have a lot of fun. Not really. Yeah. Mm, yeah okay. So there's a, outside of, you know, my life being completely occupied by this other little game that I'm enjoying. Um, there's been an absolute, I think the, the, the proper scientific term is a metric buttload of fighting game news and information and drops have happened over the past week, which I find personally invasive and disgusting that it would all <laughs> happen around Rebirth coming out. Hmm. It's just gonna happen every month at this point. Like I don't see, I don't know when it's going to stop. When it comes to fighting game news, every time we're like, yeah, we can talk about something else, but then literally ten things literally drop. Yeah, like on it, the same I, day. Around Christmas was the only, only time it dropped off a little bit. I feel. Yeah, we were yeah. thinking like, hey, we could do some topical videos about ge right? general <laughs> stuff that we we did in the past, and it was like, well, no, now we're just on a blitzkrieg of fighting game details and info because. Holy shit, we got a new Street Fighter 6 character, which we did talk about a bit earlier. We got a new Mortal Kombat 1 character. We got Tekken 8 updates. We got Dragon Ball Fighter Z rollback stuff. We got uh, a teases for other things, so we're going to talk about it all. But <laughs> the big one uh, that I think is easily one of the top things to talk about is the return of a fighting game franchise that has technically not had a new game since the mid-2000s. Yeah. And that is credible rumors from a credible source. This is rumors, not technically a leak, but uh, we got a new Virtua Fighter possibly coming in the near future, which is probably the, one of the mm. most unsurprising things, but also very nice to hear it potentially from somebody that might actually know something. Potential. Uh, yeah. It, I mean, it's something that we've always been talking about with, like, is there going to be a new Virtua Fighter? We, like, it seems like it after Virtua Fighter 5 when they released, like, you know, pretty much, like, that version of it, the PS5 version, and it did so well, right? So with the numbers, so it's like, why not? But then, didn't they do like that Sega thing where it's like, yeah, Virtua Fighter is not, not part of that reboot list? Yeah, so yeah, the, the, the reboot list, it wasn't inherently in there, but it was a part yeah. of like, that's a big initiative to to bring back like classic franchises. It's just that VF wasn't there, um, even though they're saying there's other games that are a part of that. So, but it was like, oh, so Virtua Fighter is totally there, man. Uh, and this just seems to be further confirmation of that. And this is coming from somebody that usually knows things about Sega stuff. So I guess I'll just like gauge your guys' opinions about this as we go over some of like the minor details. Cause I talked about this on stream a lot mm -hmm. and VF coming back is pretty substantial for anybody that is uh, been a part of the FGC that has been longer than possibly an 09 er uh, you know, that VF it was the most respected game like in terms yes. of actual japanese competition virtual yeah. fighter for like 15 years in japan was like the fighting game it wasn't yeah. street fighter it wasn't tekken it was vf so let's just go over a couple of these things just to gauge some opinions uh this thing's apparently very esports focused but also has online and offline modes with a lot of customization and i think that comes as no surprise 
Yeah, that makes sense for for VF. But when it says like esports focus, like what exactly did like I know what that means, but I also don't know what it means in VF's uh, concept. Like it's not going to have a lot of single player content, so I'll be being based around multiplayer and like online. Bam, and that that's Damn, exact. Okay. So that that. That impression, I feel like, is completely justified, but maybe not exactly the point. So where do you get that impression from? Where did that come from? If it's if something is esports focused, where where did the impression of like, oh, they're esportsing this shit, that means we're not getting anything else? Just because like uh, uh, Final uh, Ultimate Showdown was like, yeah, no new modes. It was just online. Like all the money was put into a better online experience and some and small little things that you can add to the game, like costumes and 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 whatever. But like no new big modes and and the fact that it was free to play for sure also gave me yeah. gives me that impression. I'm not mm. sure if that's that's what you're going for though. What about I, you? I, so I you know, what, yeah, what do you I, think? What do you think? This like oh no, they're esportsing this game. It's gonna suck ass. Where well, does that like, like come you, from? Like like you said uh japan has always been focused on like virtual fighter when it comes to like just like the competition wise having right. national tournaments and everything like that um and i i remember seeing you you tweet about it. you're like bro vir- before esports was a thing virtual fighter cre- pretty much created esports because like japan was doing all these tournaments and even recently uh, not recently, but maybe like ten years ago, Virtua Fight, like Sega, they did a, a sponsored Virtua Fighter tournament where they flew out all these players, yeah. qualifiers at a Super Arcade for their Virtua Fighter like tournament, right? Yeah, for like twenty five thousand dollars. That was the final showdown. Yeah, the final uh, showdown, the final showdown right? release yeah. on three sixty PS three. Right. So then they had Fudo and Itabashi Zangief, like the pretty much gods of Virtua Fighter, to play in this tournament, and you know they obviously did win. Uh, but they were they have always been pushing like competition before. Capcom was like, let's do like Capcom Cup or Tekken Tekken World Tour. Virtua Fighter was the first one to actually do an official tour from the company standards. Yeah, and and even with Virtua Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown, which is called Virtua Fighter Esports in japan just just as a heads up the name of the game is virtual fighter esports always yes that's what that's what the name has been in japan it's only called ultimate showdown here um that game has its entire an entire esports league that has been going since the game came out in 2021 and they're still doing it and it's and it's not a part of evo japan this year but it was a big part of it last year so yeah uh the, the 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 connotation of like or the impression that oh god they're esportsing this bitch it's gonna suck dick uh comes from street fighter 5 because yeah, street fighter yeah. 5 that yeah, was the yeah. part of it where it's like okay we're esportsing this what does that mean that means that we don't have a lot of content and our launch of the game is not going to be great but we're focusing on the competitive element so yeah. everyone's like well that sucks like that's not what anybody wants at all uh, and to be fair, right around the same time, there was another game that went heavy on esports the first time in the franchise history. And there was a shit ton of money that was distributed amongst its players, leading to some of those players having the biggest prize pools ever. And that's Mortal Kombat X. And Mortal Kombat mm-hmm. X had a ton of content, a ton of stuff in it. It was, but that was the first time NetherRealm and WB were putting a big effort into like esports. And then they had their combat cups and whatever the heck it was called. Ton of money was made, right? Yep. So. This, to me, stems from an issue that still is plaguing the FGC to this day. We think if you're going to esports a game, it's just not going to have anything in it. It's just going to be a dry game that's essentially like Virtual Fighter Ultimate Showdown, like a port with some characters, and you play online and that's it. But yeah. the further we get into this rumor, they are saying that uh, there is going to be offline modes, there's going to be customization, it's going to be released on all major platforms, crossplay. Uh, there is going to be a main story with side stories with new characters, apparently. There okay. is uh, an evolution to ranked matches and stuff that hopefully make it easier for new players. And people have already said that there is a very similar to like Virtua Quest type mode that was present in Virtua Fighter, Fi- Virtua Fighter 4 Evo. Oh, I thought you meant like Virtua Quest for GameCube. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> what was it even called in VF4 Evo? I'm trying to remember. It's not going to be like RPG. <laughs> It was something. It was was like, I think it was called Arcade Quest or something, but even that's Tekken. Christ. Yeah, that's Tekken, Arcade Quest, yeah. Um, But something Mm -hmm. very similar to that. So it's like, oh, so it seems like it has a lot of modes. Like, this person's literally explaining it, but a ton of people get attached to the fact that it says esports on it. It's mentioning esports. That means it's just not going to have anything. And I'm 
trying to remind everybody that doesn't come from the fact that they want a game to be a competition. That comes from a previous impression we have from Street Fighter fucking five that is still mm. to this day happening right now. And people are like, oh, if you're saying you're esports in a game, that means that it's just not going to have content. I think it's more of a Jap like Japanese initiative because of like the Jeju license, because uh, they really want to make it as like an actual sport and try to compete with like other games as considered like a sport like Japan. When you think of fighting games like Street Fighter, like Street Fighter Six or Street Fighter League, it's like an actual like sport there. People sure. go buy tickets to watch. So I think maybe that's like what they want to do with Virtual Fighter. Like you say, Evil Japan had Virtual Fighter last year, and the teams, the the, the players that were sponsored, it literally said VF Esports slash player name. Yes. Like so, it seems like Virt, like the actual company, Virt, like Sega, was sponsoring these players, or if that oh, yeah. was like the name. Oh no, right? no, they've had they've had big initiatives to bring back Virtual Fighter as their esports game. Yeah. And it feels like. All of these efforts were obviously put into place with Virtual Fighter Ultimate Showdown slash Virtual Fighter Esports in Japan to sort of establish that where it's like, oh, people still give a shit, you know, and it's it's mm -hmm. it's now clear people still give a shit because the game was so successful. Virtual Fighter players in Japan were just like waiting and the game kind of like popped off in Japan and elsewhere. So it was like, oh, cool. The only thing this doesn't mention is a possible like free-to-play version of the game and even uh, if yeah. vf came back and it was like a lower price point i think we're seeing that a lot in the industry right now where like massive triple a games being massive triple a prices aren't like the best way to approach things virtual fighter ultimate showdown was great because it was cheaply priced if not free depending on which which time you got it yeah. so i would very much like there to be some sort of like similar situation like even if you know, let's just say the game was on multiple platforms. If even Sony was like doing their Sony bullshit, hey, you buy it on PlayStation, you can download it for free. But if you get it on PC, it's like 20 bucks or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if they do some shit like that. Or if there's even like a Dead or Alive or a KI sort of thing. Well, like here's a cheaper version with Grand like Blue. three or four characters. Yeah, or yeah. Grand Blue. Um, and uh, here's like a more fully deluxe version. It's got like extra costumes, whatever, and all the characters yes. are unlocked. Like it, something like that would absolutely make sense for VF. And even if that rumor says like, oh, there's a story mode, it's like I will give it up to VF and only VF of if you did not have a story mode or any sort of like arcade thing with like endings and whatever that's that's the way it's it's be for like a long ass time for vf it's it's you yeah know, it would be nice to have it but yeah. if you didn't i'd be like that sucks but whatever it's it's virtual fighter what am i supposed to expect whereas like every other fighting game it's like no i want story but vf like it's fine there's a tournament that's all i need well that's and that's the challenge the virtual fighter is that it is essentially had no story you know uh dude is wild and wants to get revenge on shark is like the deepest part of story the actual goes karate man really likes karate so yeah. I, I, again this game is not i don't think it's being made inherently by uh rgg studio the guy that makes the guys that make the yakuza, yakuza games but yeah. just thinking that like oh if they have like the help or influence of rgg studio thinking about virtual fighter characters in a yakuza like story situation oh, cool. sounds incredible that sounds like premium sega shit right there if if they gave you like a little neighborhood to walk around and do things and there's Some underground Shimbo fights, yeah. uh, make a final fight streetwise, but with virtual <laughs> fighter. That's what that's I'm called Shenmue, for. bro. Shenmue. <laughs> it's essentially just Shenmue at that point. Yeah, funny how that goes around. Like that started as virtual fighter RPG, yep. um, where you're just playing as Akira and just morphed into something else. But uh, it, the, the the whole esports thing about competition, it's like even as a even as a teenager reading in magazines i would remember reading passages that say virtual fighter is still incredibly hot in japan in yeah. arcades like people are still playing virtual like the, fighter 3 and like egm magazines in like the mid 2000s and stuff yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 exactly so i was even back then knew like you know this this is not as big in the west as like tekken or mortal kombat is but like it's always being held down in japan so them focusing on the competition thing is like to me it's no worry about it being esports now that we've kind of dug into it a little bit and and if yeah. there if there's a game that could like use a refresh in some way it's vf man we have not had new v actual new vf stuff because again ultimate showdown is just a port a, a pretty looking port we haven't yeah. had new vf stuff in like 
Jesus Christ, it's been nearly 15 years. So mm-hmm. just thinking of like, oh, let's refresh the roster in some way. Let's like, I think also rebooting it would be smart. There's zero reason to call it Virtual Fighter 6. Zero reason. I think you just reboot it Virtual Fighter. It's been 15 years, man. We don't need to like add, add a numbered sequel to the end of that. Virtual Fighter 6, Neptunia, Excelsior. Yeah. Don't need that. Let's just reboot it as a modern day Virtual Fighter, change the logo or keep it the same and give people like, oh yeah, this is the fighting game that is like the most realistic bullshit. Cause that is the whole point of VF was like realism. They were always going for that outside of old school moon jumps, all Mm -hmm. like the motion capture and all that kind of like crazy stuff and animation and tweening that they were doing for Virtual Fighter 5 was revolutionary as shit. And it still looks really good. So I'm like, okay, like we can, this isn't, this isn't like the, the Tekken kind of game with like crazy anime bullshit, which is what it's essentially yep. become. They might have their rooted sort of like VF. Uh, this is my, I, I am, I am playing this character, Karate Man. He is the extension of me in real life karate. Like that's kind of what Virtual Fighter's always been. Yeah. Cause the idea was like virtual reality kind of, you're inhibiting this character. That's just Karate Man. Yes. Yeah. They have names and stuff. So I remember like playing virtual boxing, a virtual bot, like an actual headset back in the day. And I remember seeing virtual fight around the same time. I was like, yeah, that's the same thing. You're, you're just wrestler or like, you know, uh, you know, ninja Yes. or what have you. Um, Vir- virtual fighters. Sure if, Go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, um, I did a video recently where, um, there's this one designer, the main combat designer of Virtual Fighter One, uh, Ishii, and Yu Suzuki was the director, but Ishii was the combat designer. He leaves after Virtual Fighter One came out. He's not involved with VF Two, directs and designs Tekken One, then Tekken Two, mm. then leaves and r- directs Tobal One and Two, made the bouncer basically established 3d fighting games right yeah yeah and now he like works by himself everyone left his company it's still functional it's still functioning dream factory yeah and like no one's picked him back up again not sega not namco hey do you want to you know work on uh 3d fighters like he made a Zevious remake for mobile phones in Japan like five years ago. Yeah. That's oh, the wow. only thing he's been doing. And I was like, didn't even know about this guy. Like, yeah. I, you know, like when you say early Tekken, I don't even think Harada yet because I think Harada came in a little bit later, like Tekken 3, Tekken 4, Tekken 3 probably. But I was like, this dude designed 3D fighting games. And that's crazy that I only learned about this now and he's not really doing anything. And I'd like to think if VF or something was to come back, like, oh, it'd be cool if, you know, he would be given a, a chance to to do stuff like that. But uh, uh, I I just learned about this like a month ago. And I was like, damn, that's a piece of fighting game history I wasn't aware of. So Yeah, that sounds crazy. Uh, yeah, uh, and I, I feel like, you know, Virtual Fighters, it, uh, its personality is that it has so little personality. Its personality exactly. is that like it's so generalized. It's like the most generic fighting game ever, and you almost need to inject as much personality as you possibly can in a modern in a modern day. If that was definitely getting better over the years, right? Where it isn't just like, oh, I'm just playing as Polygon the character. It, mm-hmm. it was they were, they were trying to improve the personality of the characters as Virtual Fighter went on all the way to Virtual Fighter Five. So now it's like. It's been a huge jump of time. We could inject. I, I want to see like crazy taxi level of fucking personality in all of these characters, bro. Like you can do that, Sega. So there's so much room to improve and what a new VF could be mm-hmm. that it's a very exciting thing that it could be coming back. And, you know, game is fun as shit. Like people ask, like, how is it different from Tekken? Is it the same thing? Well, you can try to play it like Tekken, but really like Virtual Fighter is a game that is constantly like rewarding engagement. And yes, it's, and it's one of those games where it's like it it it, it it's like I, you can only play so much RPS, and it's like well most fighting games are like that now where it's like I'm choosing rock paper or scissors in this interaction I hope I choose the right one. Virtual Fighter just throws that interaction at you like 17 times every like six actions. So you're like oh god, so you're constantly making guesses. Uh, it's it's a very fun game. So anyway. It's kind of exciting. There's a there's another game that's coming back as we move on to other news, and we can't spend too much longer because we spent 20 minutes on VF. That's um, how important. That's how important it was. Multiverses <laughs> is back. 
uh, it, and they're they're teasing stuff. McDonald's has pictures of the Tasmanian Devil and Bugs Bunny on on, on cart cartons of fries and stuff. There's a weird marketing blitz that's happening, and this seems to be right around the corner. Hmm. And Mo I... Multiverse was was in was it was kind of interesting. Obviously, they had like that big tournament at Evo. Uh, was it two years ago? Um, uh, yes, just like I think like fifty thousand dollar or a hundred thousand dollar prize pool, with, like two v two. Um, and is it? I I guess I don't know why it left. It just because it was beta. So I can much? break it. I can break it down for you. And I've I've further heard confirmation of this without saying names uh, uh from around the bend of like oh this is this what free to play fighting games is this is sucks this because it's kind of screwed the pooch on everybody and it did yeah like a bunch of people bought stuffing for stuff for multiverses and then yeah. it went away um but why did it go away and why what happened so the game came out it was in beta and they announced that it's in beta it's like an open beta situation they were charging people for stuff which was already kind of weird some wgs yeah. going on there um <laughs> But this happens with a lot of free-to-play games that pop off really hard, where their development squad was very small. Like, for like 15 to 20 people made multiverses mm -hmm. and all of its systems. And all of a sudden, you got a game that comes out, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people are playing it daily. So they run into this issue over time, where uh, their game is so popular that they can't take it out of beta. There's so many people playing it that executives start saying, Hey, that game is really popping off, huh? So why aren't you guys making any money? And it's like, well, it was a beta. Like we weren't ready for this many people to to do this stuff. So we have to, they have to start monetizing their beta. Yeah. Because uh, especially with what we've been hearing from WB you know, lately, it's like, well, it makes yeah. sense why this happened. So long story short, their development crew doesn't isn't developing things anymore. They turn into live ops, which is like live operations. They now have to keep their game functioning. And what happened to multiverses over the time that it was available? It started working less and less and less. The netcode was getting worse. Like the game was just functioning significantly worse than it was at launch. So it's like, oh shit. Uh, this is bad. So yeah. eventually they just had to take it down and they didn't get a chance to like balance things because none of their team was ready for this shit. So they, they pretty much announced we're leaving beta. And even though people bought stuff, they're like, that'll carry over or something to the final release. And they're like, so our game wasn't actually a full game. We need to turn it into a full game. Yeah. And that's where they've been ever since. So I think we're going to okay. see, it's been like a year or so. We're actually going to see what Multiverses is as a real, you know, actual released free to play game. Yeah, and unfortunately, I it seems, judging by their Twitter at least, that something's going to be revealed in like the next few days. So it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be after we've recorded, but before this episode goes up. Sadly, as yeah. as is always the way, because they're 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 just making big big uh, impressionable tweets on the multiverse's Twitter and stuff. So like, it's probably going to be pretty soon. And, is, and it's been what, like a year, a year and, and a half, I, I a think couple it's months? been uh, a year Two and a years. few months. It's been, I think it's, it's been like, yeah, sometimes yeah. since it went down at least. It's been a mm. while. Yeah. It's, been a, it's while. been a while. So I think, you know, obviously it's like the expectations of people are relatively high because multiverses as a game was pretty fun. And I think they, they had something going here, but it was like, okay, is that it? Like it's it's enjoyable exactly, and it's it's yeah. not bad, but it's like okay. So once that's over and we get we get used to like the two v two part of it, right? Is that it? And and yeah. clearly that was it because that's all they were ready to release at the time. So I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt. I hope these guys come up with something that's like you know pretty engaging and kind of cool. It's gonna be hard because Multiverses was a game that was astronomical when it came out. More people were playing multiverses than like any fighting game we've ever seen documented ever in a single period of time, actual documented. So are they going to be able to get that again? Probably not, bro. <laughs> I don't know. It's I mean, possible. It just depends what they show, I think. Yeah, if they add if new characters, I mean... the Godzilla! Just literally saying. their tweet was like, they have Bart Simpson there. I don't even know if they own Bart Simpson. No, I, th I think that was... I, I think I, that was just for me. Yeah, that might have just <laughs> been for either Matt McMuscles or for the memory. That would I be mean, crazy. I mean, uh, ima imagine though, you know, you get you get like the like the Simpsons, two of them, and they, they could be like the arcade game where they yeah. tag up and stuff. That'd be they cool. really got to go ham yeah. on roster, I feel. Like, yeah, they, they have, they have to, like, to. They have to embellish the fact that they do. you have Warner Brother IP. Like, go ham with it. 
Yeah, but like Disney owns Fox, and while WB and Disney have collaborated like once oh, or twice. Oh, it ain't The like, Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> but like Warner Brothers uh, published like a Marvel Lego game, so that's like you know both companies kind of doing something yeah. together, sort of. But yeah, I don't I don't see. I don't see uh, if this is a big success. You better believe there's gonna be like another Simpsons fight. Simpsons Wrestling Two will Ooh. come out or something. You know, so. Crazy Simpsons. It'll be the Crazy Taxi Clone all over. And didn't they get sued for that? Uh, that they sort of. They were like, Sega said you have to stop this shit for uh, Simpsons no Road Rage, yeah. no and more. they just stopped selling it. But it had already sold past its like life cycle anyway. Yeah. And I think they think they just stopped. And that's why the next Simpson game, which was made by the same developer just turned into like GTA. Yeah. Um, road rage. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, hit and run. So yeah. yeah, I think that's why Sega did do something. They're there like, was this a legal is way thing. too close to crazy taxi brother. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, fair enough. You know, it, ma it made for a good game. That's for sure. Um, mm. So yeah, multiverse is coming back. I think that comes as no surprise to anybody. And it's like, yeah. yeah, we knew it was it was going away and they games take time to cook. So I just hope they've made something really cool. I want to see like supers on characters and shit, man. Like I want to yeah. see like get us to like the Smash Brothers level of eventually Smash evolved into having supers and stuff. It does, everything needs to be just melee. And it felt like we're trying to make a melee like, you know, in several <laughs> ways, like every goddamn Smash clone. It's like, well, no, let's let's push this forward like a little bit more. Moving on, we also got some marvel 3 news funny enough and this one i've heard about for a long time that uh colossus has been in development for quite some time in the hands of uh fan modders and it is happening uh colossus got teased as well as hinata from rival schools uh that was new to that's me. An interesting that one's one. new i did not know about yeah. hinata and uh this kind of just cements marvel 3 as being one of the greatest modded fighting games of all time uh I think for, so now. and just as like an update yeah a, a lot of like animation importing has been happening on previous characters again like venom looks just like he does from mvci so it's sick dude it's sick to see Bro. a game that's like so beloved to still going in this day in the hands of fans Colossus looks so good. Like he got he the shoulder gorgeous. tackle. He got the super coming down and up. I wonder if they're gonna give him the armor super. Like I'm so curious. If yeah. He, I mean, installs are easy, but like getting an armor super. Like I don't think. Uh, yeah. There's no character in Marvel three that currently has kind of like an armor super. Huh? I don't think so. I, I one of my favorite Colossus moves like is the original Coda, where he grabs you and spins the shit out yeah. of you. Yeah. Like, and he like that'd be so sick if that was a combo extension of some kind or an ender so i'm hoping so that eventually gave, makes yeah. it in so they gave him that like the, the grab but it's uh it's pretty much haggard's like like power driver yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah which but not which as, not as interesting yeah i mean they gave her like the burning tatsu they gave her like her throwing the sneaker pretty much like her move set i'm just curious like you know we see one of her supers and still in development is it going to be possible to see like if she's going to have a team super you know, maybe huh. like bring in Batsu, like because you know CVS two when Kiyosuke yeah. does yeah. Her, does his level three, he gets he brings in Batsu Hinata. I wonder if he if if he's gonna have a rival school team super in there because Batsu is available, yeah. right for for that. So they could take Batsu, but more. Kiyosuke yeah, but, maybe. But but they don't have Kiyosuke made, I believe, not yet. Mm, yeah, I guess I guess you have to yeah make a model just for that. Um, Hinata, a fine character, but it's like. That's a weird I, one. I, 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 yeah, just because it's like Sakura, Sakura is in in yeah, here she's in, already. Yeah, right? she's in. Yeah, so just that they're kind of similar a little bit, but it's like I would love like you know Tiffany or even Akira or anything. I or it would be great a rival schools game, Capcom. <laughs> That'd be sick too. A, a you know like maybe a re-release. You know, just kind of like I'll just put it on Steam or something. You know, that's it. If if I was to ask both you guys right now, Capcom brings back one fighting game right now. What? Oh. Marvel vs. Capcom. Answer now. Marvel vs. Capcom. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, Mars Capcom? J Justin? Like, like Mars Capcom 2 or Mars Capcom like Marvel vs. Capcom to exist in some way. That's it. Okay. Because <laughs> it doesn't. It, it, it's fucking dead. I I mean, how did you try that uh, the RP, RC PS3 one? Marvel 2? A Ooh. lot of people say it's good. No. A lot right. of people say it's good. Yeah, yeah. People, well, so... There, so anybody knows RPCS3 PlayStation 3 emulation, right? 
they got all of the Capcom fighting games working on it. So Marvel 2, Third Strike Online, Dark Starcross Resurrection, Marvel vs. Capcom Origins. Uh, it doesn't provide its own netcode, like, you know, emulated netcode. It just uses the netcode those games had. Yeah. So people are like, oh, let's play Ultimate Marvel 3. And like, no, 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 no. You're you're <laughs> using Ultimate Marvel 3 netcode, and that shit is, is, a, is a dick in a pickle jar. You do not yep. want to play that. Uh, however, there is Marvel games that have good netcode. Marvel 2 is pretty good netcode. Marvel Origins, pretty good netcode. And then you also have Third Strike Online, Darkstalkers. These are all Iron Galaxy games, so their netplay is great. Or re almost all of them Iron Galaxy. So yeah. that's... That's good news. That means that people have been going online, playing Marvel 2 and shit, and it works. You, there's no barely any matchmaking because you have to, like, tell a friend to jump on. Yeah. But at the same point, it's it's running. So that's, that's very good news for the emulation scene. But again, this is all emulation. These are fans, right? These are this fans. This is actual, like, fan effort. The same thing with Colossus and Hinata, Marvel 3 mods. Like, if we're talking about, hey, we want one thing to come back, Matt's either going to say Darkstalkers or Rival Schools. Or I'm going to say Rex. Marvel versus Capcom because it is effing dead. Uh, and I can't. I can't think I can I don't think I can put my 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 name into the hat of any other Capcom big franchise they have because those characters can be in Marvel versus Capcom, which is where I'd be like, okay, okay, that's sick. That's oh true. man. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it, I think more Matt's more of like the games that just never came back to life. Okay. Right. So I'm I'm like for me it's it's just easily for me it's just rival schools. Like I love oh. rival schools. Yeah, I mean I, I played more Rival Schools than Doc Stalkers. That was just me personally. Sure. So okay. for me, yeah, it's me, Rival me Schools. And there's definitely a, a path where uh, Rival Schools at one point technically was like a dating sim game in Japan. <laughs> so you can turn it into like a mini Persona game, but it's running around that's a school not, and fighting people. That's still not translated, though, I don't think. Nope. No, Never came out here. Fuck. I would love that. Um, I, yeah, because the answer is Rival Schools. Um, yeah. And the only, like, listen, they're both kind of tag games. I know they're different, but... Um, just because these characters are so cool and we have not seen them return in, you know, any form because Marvel has gotten, if, if Marvel hadn't gotten the couple of re-releases or remasters or, uh, like an Xbox 360 or even an arcade one up stuff, I'd be like, yeah, Marvel deserves its time, but because it's been back in some form or another and now in it's and currently out. dead yeah. in and out. Whereas like rival schools, when I look at rival schools characters and I forget about some, like specifically ones in like project justice, I'm like, this character is so fucking cool like there's not a, a shit character like and the, the the artwork for them is so nice it's just like i just want to see this in hd i don't care if it's yeah. a re-release or a new game i think a re-release would be fine and it's like yeah if capcom was to bring one fighting game back i'd bring this over dark stalkers i bring this over power stone i bring this over uh snk versus capcom like anything really it's just I think like people would like like younger people would see these characters like younger anime fans that don't know these be like holy shit look at this fucking chick look at this <laughs> fucking dude like they their their minds would be blown you know <laughs> you're like you're like you're like well look at Tiffany <laughs> look at Tiffany look at Natsu look at uh, look at uh, look at Bowman look yeah, at Bowman. Hayato Hayato. Uh, Hayato's yeah. so hot. And anyway. he got some cool characters in that game. <laughs> yeah, do yeah. do you, do you choose uh, rival schools or Capcom? Do we even count Capcom versus SNK to come no, back? No, you can't. No, because it's, it's crossover, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and plus, she, yeah. but she never got to play it to begin with. Like, if it had come out for like a day, yeah, <laughs> and you, everyone got to play it, you, and it got, got canceled. The, fun. You got the trashy PS3 version. Like really yeah, trashy the, PS3 there's a version. backwards compatible PS3 version of CVS2 that plays uh -oh. your, your your PS2 disc, and it runs like butt. And, oh, Trashy. Wait. No, actually, I think it was a, a for sale on PlayStation Network on PS3, and it was like, oh, here's yeah, like a it's digital, here's like a port yeah. of it, and it yeah. runs like absolute trash. There's so much input delay, it's stupid. So it's not even worth playing. Oh, I thought you meant Capcom. Um... Capcom uh, fighting all stars. I thought that's what you guys were talking about. So that's why I was oh, like, fighting oh, fighting it, it Yeah, fight. Well, no, uh, the 3D. Oh, the 3D, 3D one. Oh, oh. All stars. I thought that's what you were getting at. So that's why I was like, oh, um, you know, it never released or, or whatever. <laughs> so it doesn't count. But then you're saying like crossover. But yeah, a crossover doesn't count. That's, you know, it has to be like it's it. Capcom couldn't re-release it because SNK is a factor. Sure. Yeah. Or whatever. So. Exactly. 
Um, in other news, uh, this, there's not much to talk about here because it is literally a silhouette. But uh, <laughs> here comes a new Daredevil. Guilty Gear Strive is entering its third season? Third, is third that season. We're at? we're at three right now. Uh, yeah, three. And there's a character that's being teased. They seemingly have hair. And that's about all we could pull from this image, I think. You want to make um, a guess? So well, the, make, make a guess. Who the hell do you think this is? Venom. So, yeah, me personally, I want Venom. Like, yeah. That, I just, I'm just but, pre hoping for it's Venom. Because the hair thing, I think that's a red herring. It could be the side it's of the mask. Hair, it's not yeah, yeah, exactly. Because Venom has a mask here and it like goes down there. Yeah, I see what you mean. Mm. It could also so, be Ava too. Yeah, that's that's the other theory I saw people talking about. Um, yeah, like I love bring back more silhouettes. I think more fighting game reveals need to have more silhouettes for weeks. I like for that. weeks. You like that, Max? I love silhouettes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I made so many silhouettes. Uh, let hey, me tell, how is broccoli Dino, man exists. How is Dino not gonna post a picture of Brian Battler spinning in the center of the silhouette? It's gonna happen. It, 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 it's an eventuality it's it's good to see that guilty gear is obviously still going you know because mm -hmm. there's other fighting games that have been out for comparable amounts of time kof 15 feels like it's being sunsetted right now where it's we're at the end of like kof 15 they added like a big gameplay changing mechanic um but there's no i think new characters on the horizon as of right now because clearly city of the wolves is going to be maybe coming out this year we don't know um city of the wolves but obviously guilty gear strive still going it's the biggest guilty gears ever been and it's fantastic news for that game it's great to see that this is all uh coming to a head and they're going to keep going so it's yeah. wonderful and yeah venom coming back is like obviously a huge requested character he's only going to get access to two pool cues he's not going to get he's not going to get like bing 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 have like bing, three bing, bing. on the screen at a time no that's too much brain power for guilty gear strive people will not be able to well, handle that well you know based off how guilty gear strive is when it comes to returning like complex characters they just make them simple oh yeah so that's what i mean for, for, so for sure like like when you think about testament a testament had a complete makeover with the whole like tool set literally all the moves from past guilty gear just it's just gone yeah literally gone so i can imagine venom could possibly be the same but it's kind of harder because I mean, Venom, if he has the pool stick, it's like he's going to be playing pool somewhat. Yep. Um, so I, I'm curious on what's the, the gimmick going to be for this one, if it is Venom. Yeah. Yeah, but it's how how they sort of uh, abridge the character is always going to be a yeah. fascinating approach for Guilty Gear Strive. Um, for Guilty Gear, every fighting game at least has a, or not every, but like let's say a lot, have had one guest character from at least another fighting game franchise that that company owns. For example, uh, you know, uh, Sam Show characters being in KOF 15. Guilty Gear has not yet had Never. one. Who would you like to see that would fit in or you'd like to see in Guilty Gear 4's art style? I have an idea, but any, any, any things jump out at you? Uh, Force Strive. God damn. Scorpion. Interesting. Yeah, I, I want to see a goddamn Mortal Kombat character in Guilty Gear Strive or some shit. Never, mm. it'll never happen. No, no, it'll never. That'd happen. That'd be too I, sick. I, it would have to be an anime-related character, kind yeah, of like exactly. how TV yeah. was in Grand Blue. Um, so I think it would be something, maybe a Honkai Star Rail character. I, I could see that. Justin's mm. mega braining here. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, Honkai Star Rail character in guilty gear strive that would that would that would be crazy in a similar fashion i will say there's other games out there that just got a guest character which is like 2b showed up in grand blue right yeah Although has been in other fighting games uh but that relationship exists and i'm like they even said hey we're not doing any more guest characters for the season of grand blue you know this season he's going for final fantasy Motherfuck, <laughs> dude. If they are like, okay, so Tifa's going to be in Tekken. Let's put Cloud in Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Like, damn, that shit would be fucking sick. I would much prefer to see a Final Fantasy character in that versus Tekken. Exactly. Because it's already going to be photorealistic anyway. We've seen what those characters look like. Sure. Right? But like Tifa or Cloud or like Vincent in, in yeah. fucking, in fucking Grand Blue? Gear? Made, Grand made Blue? Made by Grand Blue? Works? Oh my God, yeah, yeah. dude. It would be that, that shit would be godlike. It would be so cool. So, so my answer in, in Guilty Gear, it'd be like 
Donovan or Jetta oh, from Darkstalkers. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're getting towards the uh, yeah. The, who who should make a new Darkstalkers game? No, it should be Arc System Works. They should no, be the ones sure. to make no. an Arc Sys- the, uh, uh, friggin' Darkstalkers title. That, that how is that? Because I, I like you know of all the companies that have collaborated, it's like Arxis and Capcom have not. Nope. There's been nothing. So never. I don't think that's Is it so never? Possible, Technically, but, mm. I, I think there's some something in like the mid 2000s, like on a Sengoku Basara or some weird shit. There uh, is a crossover yes. with our system works. Yeah, yeah. Sengoku Basara cross. Yeah. yeah maybe that was that's Capcom it. IP. It was like 20 years ago, but still, <laughs> you found a while back. A few years back. But it, it has existed in the past, long story short. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, that that'd be the sickest thing. That like uh, the best case scenario, Capcom just goes guilt uh Arxis go nuts. We don't even have the manpower to make this ourselves. Yeah. Because we're busy with Street Fighter Six still probably at the time. But that'd be that'd be really cool. Like I'd also accept Felicia in Guilty Gear. I think that'd be really fun. Like pretty much any Dark Stalker character would fit in Guilty Gear pretty well. I think uh like Bishamon, like realistically Ooh, would be one of Bishamon. the sickest characters you can stick in there. That or no, no, it's Donovan. It's, it's definitely Donovan. Donovan, Donovan is Donovan a guilty is character. Due. He's due. We like we I feel like Donovan's one of those characters that if you are not involved with like a fan of being a fan of Dog Stalkers, you don't really get a chance to play him. Nope. That's true. Right? Nope. He you know never I mean? really got his chance to shine. Like yeah, he's, exactly. he's a weird character with weird ass gameplay and he wasn't good. So uh it's like, oh yeah, like the crazy JoJo guy should should obviously be super fun, and <laughs> he's never been. <laughs> Donovan's best version of himself is in Puzzle Fighter. That's just what it is. Good point. <laughs> Jesus, good point. Um, so speaking of Arc System work stuff, even more, uh, DNF Duel is getting another character. <clears throat> and uh, it's wild to see that, like, the next it's story we're going to have happening. is... It's still happening. The next still story we're going to talk about is Dragon Ball Fighter's rollback up- update is out. Uh, but also there's three big arc system works things. These guys are like working on how many games, uh, at least three right now. And they're all getting updates like around the same time. So we're getting a new guilty gear character, a new DNF dual character. We just got another uh, four games. We just got another grand blue fantasy versus rising character and the dragon ball update just happened. So these, these mm-hmm. fools are busy in the background. Um, but monk is coming to DNF dual and he looks kind of cool, right? Uh, granted e- DNF dual characters are pretty dang fun inherently yeah. just by default i haven't seen the gameplay stuff here he's fighting battle so, mage yeah i watched the gameplay and the first thing i'm like what watching was like okay he's literally a steve fox and yeah like, he's like he's a boxer he's a pretty much a boxer and i thought monk. that was kind of i thought that was kind of weird because he's a monk right so like there was nothing martial artist about him or healing of a monk he's just really a sure. boxer but his name is monk and the craziest part was the first match against Battle Mage. Battle Mage just smoked him. Yeah. Like so, so, <laughs> so it, it didn't even really show him like how how good he is. He has really cool combos, like way cooler combos than like <laughs> so, no, a normal boxer. He's he's a monk, which you immediately think of like some sort of like Asian culture in yeah. some way. But he's you a know, Jesus healing. monk. He's he's yeah, like he's, he's like Christian he's, monk. So he's, he's got like a cross like pattern <laughs> yeah. on his. Or, or I thought like Franciscan wearing the brown robe yeah. monk. Yeah. No, no. Here's a hot silver fox daddy that punches. Yeah, bro. Yeah, and, and it's and interesting. It's, it's super yeah. down with like Jesus in each one of my fists. Like, so again. Okay. It's a pretty so, interesting character. He really believes he has faith in his punches. See, that's how it works. There you go. That's uh, that each one of these fists, these one of these punches is gonna kill your ass. It, it yes. seems it seems like they didn't know what to do too much <laughs> with the monk. That's just how I think of it. It's like, you know, how we have this character, but we just don't know how to make him like his class. Well, Maybe an actual uh DNA uh, uh dungeon fighter, maybe then maybe that's what he does as well. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've, if that's I've, the way I've, the monk I've, works. I have no, no idea. I, I never, I never played the monk class, but like I know the priest class was just really cool. But we, they already have the priest with the big cross. That one. Okay. Uh, so, so this one, I just, I, it was just kind of confusing to me. I thought he would be more of like a healer, like something like that, because you know, like they made him like unga bunga man. Yeah, like, they yeah, did. Yeah. They, 
they they literally made a boxer. That's what it comes down to. I'm a little I disconnected. Like I, I mean, I love DNF Duel when I played it, right? I'm a little disconnected because at one point when they changed the entire like meter system of the game, uh, less than a year like after it was out, yeah, uh, they they destroyed Troubleshooter. Like they really fucked him up. So I'd have to go back and see how the game has changed. I, I, I talked to a bunch of DNF heads, and at the time they were like, "Oh no, Troubleshooter's a, a piece of shit now." So it's like, "Oh, oh man, come on." <laughs> so uh, it, it, I'm curious where they're at at the moment if that's changed. But yeah, seeing seeing this dude swaying in and out and having like a ton of mobility and shit in this gameplay is kind of cool. So I, yeah. I'm sure I'll be trying it. Mm. Uh, what is next? Oh, so Dragon Ball Fighters rollback. Yeah, it got released at the exact same day as like Rebirth came out. Thanks, <laughs> Bandai Namco. Thanks for that. You made uh, a great decision, though. All right. So yeah, geez. <laughs> well, to be to be honest, I had the most fun I've ever had with Dragon Ball during the rollback beta. I could not believe how how much fun I was having. Two aging people for just air dashing at me and i was able to respond to it it was it, i and i i don't play offline dragon ball right and it was the closest mm -hmm. to like offline dragon ball than i had ever felt so it was like oh dude this is magical it's so much fun because dragon ball is an extremely fun game in its final season yeah um, but then the, the, the these bugs that you know people have been seeing like they yes. didn't exist in the beta that you were playing no. right so there right? was definitely some rollback bugs in the beta where uh, the the sync state of rollback is really important because yeah. if it if it rolls back to what actually happened, there could be like a bug of like visual fidelity. So that was happening when there was stage transitions, and you would get the camera to go and you watch the character flying in the distance and they go through a bunch of boulders and shit into like the next yep. stage transition in the beta that was mostly fucking up where like the yep. camera just didn't hit the sync state of both players and it was like what so it just you saw them like going into like the the ether and you're like where did they go and it was like round two and you're like oh okay so there were clearly some visual bugs now there are other, there are characters that There's are on other visual screen, bugs. Yeah, that pop on screen temporarily, and they and or there's like you turn into multiple characters at once, and they're yeah. not going away. They're they just, just stay there. staying on the screen. So now the I've, entire stage is full of Gogito Fritos and shit. I've never seen anything like this in fighting games in general. I even understand. Yeah, I was trying to think if there was like another bug that's kind of like that, but the only thing I could think of was like marvel 2 but then those are glitches that are performed by humans yeah uh, this this is literally a glitch a bug that's just if you're playing it just happens yeah so. it's a it's it's a it's a really the, the game can't be left in this state long story short <laughs> like i'm just gonna copy an image and paste it in here just so we have like editor perspective in the future yeah, but please. the game cannot be <laughs> the game cannot be left in this state it's a, it's a I great fighting game that, that i don't Look, know they can't it's, dude if, sell if you, this as like a rainbow omega edition yeah if you think about it right if we are humans and we're watching like act like we're in this world we're act we're watching these people fight yeah. these saiyans and monsters fight this is what we would see in real life yeah you know true dude <laughs> this picture of fucking super saiyan 4 Goku oh yeah team posing riding like golden shenron is yeah. peak video games <laughs> it's uh it's pretty bad so the game can't be left here. Oh. Long story short, a sorry arc <laughs> system works. We got to commission you for another one, says Bandai Namco. We got to fix this shit. Um, mm. So, you know, fair enough. You know, I'm just, I'm willing to wait. How about this? This is this is actually good this happened for me so that when the eventual rollback netcode patch comes out there and we don't go. get a bunch of visual bullshit on the screen, uh, we will be able to play it. So, you know. There you go. Good for you, Dragon Ball Fighters. I'm looking forward to the eventual rollback release. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in other news, oh go yeah, go ahead, Justin. No, I'm just I just feel bad because all the the tournaments that they people normally run the community they just can't run tournaments anymore, right? Until yeah, they I fix don't. This. So I don't know if this is a a rollback bug like online. So yeah. potentially, yeah, the online net play stuff for tournaments would be absolutely jacked. When this would have been a, a helpful element to it, 
Um, I don't know if it happens offline. I'd have to. I'd have to check because I yeah, offline. Played it. No, I think it's online. Just like because when you look at all the screenshots, it always has the online like tags and stuff. Yeah, this this definitely comes across as there's there's definitely a bug in the rollback netcode that is not syncing correctly, or there's some goofy thing happening in you know this thing called the rift, which is this in between space where it's communicating, yeah. and it's just not syncing up correctly with both players. So yeah, we'll uh we'll we'll see what eventually happens for good old Dragon Ball. I love I, I'm going to make a poster of T posing Super Saiyan. <laughs> this should be your new Twitter, uh, your Twitter icon I, I yeah, should, Twitter it should. profile picture. So uh, a few days back, this is actually a healthy amount of time ago, uh, February 26th. I think this is about under a month from the release of Tekken 8, and they are celebrating two million units sold for Tekken 8, which is wonderful. Uh, yes great news and i think is one of the best selling in, in that time frame one of the best selling tekken games of all time yeah because i think we've talked about tekken 7 was like kind of a slow build. yes slow like burn it, it, yeah yeah so i mean that's better that's not as good as possibly mortal kombat 1 but i think it's better than street fighter 6 it's i, I think it, i think it's comparable it's I, the, comparable okay. and i don't think we're getting we're beaten Mortal Kombat sales in first initial month because again MK1 sales were based on the fact that MK11 was just amazing. Mm -hmm. People loved yeah. that. Uh, again, Tekken 7 was really good, but there's something that Tekken 8 is missing and it's like crazy guest character appeal. It's just a great Tekken game. Uh but still 2 million units sold, I think exceeds expectations of even Bandai Namco in that time frame. So, like, that's wonderful. Like Soul Calibur 6 sold 2 million lifetime. Like mm, when yeah. all was said and done, I, that, that was the last official number we got. Their their expectation was, I think, for Soul Calibur, they wanted two million in the first year, which is about average for a fighting game release in Japan. Yeah. Uh, so like Street Fighter Five, that was that case for Marvel versus Capcom's. That was the case. They want two million in a year. So again, a fighting game Tekken is obviously much more expensive, but a fighting game selling two million in a month is extremely good uh, for mm -hmm. a Japanese made fighting game. So they deserve it, man. And they, they just they had their it, shop yeah. that opened up. I think where there's a whole level of conversation to be happening uh, about that. The classic costumes are for sale now. I haven't had a chance to check it out, but they are about oh, four really? bucks each. Yeah. Okay. I want to check that out then. Yeah. So I think they got Uni Uniglow collab shirts too. That you can yeah. Buy. There's free stuff. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. There's it's, it's the first time Tekken has had like an in-game shop, right? Uh, that yeah. isn't. Uh, that isn't just the, the basic ones that you get for the characters, but it seems like this might be a path for the future of like customization items. And I think we talked about this before to actually be sold in some way. Mm -hmm. And I think if there's a thing you could do for Tekken is to just release more customization items that allow people to just buy it for their goofy ass characters if they want. So it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so congratulations, Tekken 8. Uh, one that's really important that I think we got to talk about. We got the best Mortal Kombat 1 character that has ever been released. And I'm Finally? Not even, I'm not even shitting you. Like, so I played, Cho. I Bo Cho. Uh, <laughs> I played Peacemaker at Warner Brothers uh, about two weeks ago now. And I had never had as much fun in the first hour with any character in MK1 as I did with Peacemaker. He is stupid fun. No one saw this coming. Like, well before his gameplay trailer, we were like, oh, it's going to be Gun it's Robocop. Robocop, man. Yeah. And Robocop it's not man. the case at all, yeah? No. Uh, the, this character's freaking insane. And he's hilarious. And his he's got a crazy bird thing that eats assists and shit. Uh, he's genuinely cool. And he almost reminds me of, like, an MKX character. He's so yeah. much fun. No, that's actually pretty cool because like when i was watching videos of peacemaker and like even sonic if i was playing peacemaker like even he was like yeah i think this might be my new main character just because yeah. like they were wow. doing like 50 percent combos with one bar like they got yes. restands and yeah even i mean even john cena tweeted that he was super happy that he's part of the game and his personality showed like it, it just, shows like his facial so animations funny. are amazing so too funny yeah the so, uh so great. just just to explain how crazy this character is like justin will understand this because like your your options in mk1 are relatively limited depending on which character you play yeah um this bitch has two restands uh two he stands. has four launchers i think four uh and he and this is not even using assists yet 
Yeah. So he's wild, dude. They just they threw the kitchen sink. I think it's because it is John Cena. So they wanted to like do him justice or some shit. But at yeah. the same point, it's like, okay, if this is the future of the game, we thought we were gonna get Robocop 2.0 with this guy. Instead, we got an MKX character. If this is the future of the game, this is gonna be great. And and I really, really, really hope that this is like a sign of how characters might be going down the line. Because who are the next characters we get? Homelander, Ermac, Takeda. Oh and God, I forgot about Ermac. I forgot about Homelander. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Homelander's coming. So if Peacemaker's a sign of that, that'll be extremely cool. And they also, like, fixed Quan Chi. They gave him a ton of crazy new shit. So, nice. And he was pretty bad before. But it was clear that he's got some interesting stuff. It's just that it wasn't good. Um, and I think they're already trying to fix that. So anyway, to me, it's just more so, so, uh, so, kind of confirmation that the future of mk1 is probably going to be pretty dope at least for gameplay reasons i don't know about single player content because apparently nobody likes the new season of costumes apparently yeah mm. yeah i don't even I, know what the I, fuck it is but it's people are it, livid it's it's it, i saw it's like umk3 stuff so it's classic umk3 smoke so it's just the the ultimate mortal Kombat design and also mk3 sub-zero yeah. so unmasked yeah. sub-zero and like, okay, I have not played the game in like two months or whatever, and maybe I need to zoom in. Maybe it looks worse on on a screen, on a TV screen. But I was like, those look fine, but people don't like them. But I've always found a lot of the classic costumes in like MKX, in MK11. Some of them always do kind of look a little they look off. Weird. Like the yeah. UMK3 costumes in either, in, I'm pretty sure in MKX uh, or or they look maybe. Shitty. There, there, there's weird bumps and something's just off. So maybe, maybe it's a, like a legacy thing. But uh, I thought the Sub Zero looked fine, and I saw that the Deadly Alliance. I'm not sure if Deadly Alliance uh, Scorpion is like available to like just get now because before it was like a hard to get premium rotating item. Yeah, I lost track. Yeah, you have to buy it. That shit. I have no idea what that shit is going through now. <laughs> if there's any way you can even buy some of those costumes that were available at launch and shit, I have no idea. They probably Listen, will rotate like kind of like a fire sale, like maybe down the road. I I I really hope the Tekken store doesn't do that shit. The Tekken store just goes, here's the costume, it's always available, buy it or yes. yeah, right. whenever you get. Because this rotating shit, nah man, you miss me with that. Yeah, the FOMO <laughs> shit is brutal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> So Peacemaker's really cool and it comes with a new season of stuff that once again the casual fan base doesn't seem super happy with. I think there's something we also have to add to this conversation. And it's WB games. A publicly listed yes. their brand new strategy when it comes to their game making ideology and I'll, I'll read this as per the tweet i read it from uh this is straight from the mouth of wb games ceo uh rather than just launching one and done console games how do we develop a game around uh like a hogwarts legacy or harry potter that's a live service where people can live and work and build and play in that world in an ongoing basis. So they're obviously talking about games as a service. They yeah. later go on to say things that like the the typical AAA game, AAA development cycle isn't working. And we're almost going directly towards games as a service and mobile games. So that like, leaves me very worried about the future of NRS and in, in just in general what, what NRS makes, which is big AAA games. Yeah. I feel like I got stupider as you read that tweet to me because the whole thing is no one bought Suicide Squad because it's a live service game. Like, yeah, there's a single player story and all that, but like it's meant to be it, it's meant to be consumed and played as a live service. Come back for like this week's challenges, come back for this week's costumes. Yeah. Blah blah blah. And we've seen this like since MK eleven at the very least. Uh of like, you know, grinding for shit and just here's more shit and here's more shit. And there's a way to do this for like a new franchise. When you start bolting it to stuff you like that's been around for years, like Mortal Kombat, like Injustice, yeah. Yeah, or, or, you know, DC characters and stuff, like people are not going to like it. Yeah, I don't and, understand how you can look at, at what uh, Suicide Squad apparently failed and they had to something follow up uh, before this tweet that you read where they're like, we are disappointed with Suicide Squad with how it has been sure. selling, but but our solution is to make more 
<laughs> yeah, it's weird. They they say they're not they're not not making AAA games in the future, but the the fact that Mortal Kombat's a game that was already a a, a premium price was clearly rushed and had mm. the monetization of a uh of a game that's essentially free to play mm -hmm. is brutal. It's like yeah, this this just like reeks WB buffoonery at a core level, and yeah. it. It kind of just goes back to like, well, it seemed like MK1 clearly was not ready. This was a game that was not prepared to be released when it was. Obviously, crossplay is still being worked out to this day. They just uh, they just had to take down the crossplay for the PC yeah, version. This is some PC, weird yeah. shit. Um, so I don't know, man. Like I, I, I think I, the more we learn about this crazy WB behind the scenes bullshit, it the more I feel bad for NRS, where it feels like they were backed into a corner. And they they essentially had to release their game early, uh, and now they're having to add all this crazy monetization stuff because the way a game is sold is not decided by W is not decided by NetherRealm Studios. They make the game, and yeah. they make the content. They're essentially chosen to distribute the things that WB wants to execute in their titles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I feel I feel pretty bad because these these guys have been on a hot streak they've been essentially carrying mortal Kombat and the other franchises and justice around it by just making games that people want for a very long time and putting a bunch of shit in them and obviously mk1 is the first one where there's a, a big stumble where now a lot of people are pissed off and the future things that are happening including what's happening in this update even though john cena is dope um leaves a lot of the casual audience not not cool with it even even their latest invasion season from what i understand is not great according to casual fans and it's like even the hardcore audience is like I can't go on YouTube without seeing like a prominent Mortal Kombat content creator saying Talking this shit. is shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and and that so. that boils down to the fact that like some gameplay stuff in the game is fun for sure. And I think me for and sure. Justin can echo that where it's like we're having fun with this, but it clearly like stops and doesn't evolve much after that. Yeah, which it's, is it's missing a lot yeah because there's no like movement options there's very little yeah. you can do beyond what the game sets up in your systems so it gives you this impression that like oh you're having fun but then after like a month you're like all right i'm looking at the exact same things happen over and over and over again and i'm doing the exact same very easy combo over and over and over again uh this isn't this isn't great so it's good to see that like john cena is a character that has a lot of options because you know there's not a lot of strings in the game just in general, like combo strings uh, built into the characters. So it'll be, I very much hope that changes, man. And I just, I just want to see the game evolve in some way, more assist usage, more of that kind of stuff. I think gameplay is a more very variety. easy thing they can fix. More variety. Yeah. It, it's, it's weird because it's almost like Mortal Kombat 11 in a different way. Where it's like Mortal Kombat 11 also kind of felt like after a little while, it's like, well, yeah, I'm kind of just doing this or not giving a lot of combo yes. freedom. And it seemed like it that was the case. I think we all agreed when we started playing MK1. Uh, they were like, oh, yeah, you can do this, this, and this. But yeah. it's like, yeah, that was after the honeymoon period. It's like, oh, no, it's still... It went down a different path, but it's still the same sort of stuff. In my opinion, it was better than MK1 because MK1, I, I felt it in the first five minutes of playing the game. At MK11, least with, you mean? I'm sorry, MK11. Yes, first five yeah. minutes playing the game. At least in MK1, it's like, oh, I can do this, I can do that. That's fun. That works. Air combos. Okay, cool. So there is options here. It's just that eventually, it's like, okay, so it didn't, it didn't really evolve past this too much. Not, not a ton. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the rough part. It's, it's yeah. just hard because you can't really. It's really hard to nerf assists, and if you do, it just kind of ruins what you learn, the character. You got to find somebody new, and then no matter what, you're going to find another character that you can do the same strategy that you did with your old assist. Like, if you were, like, a yes. Cyrax player with Baraka, well, guess what? Cyrax is nerfed. You're going to go move on to Striker, yeah. right? And then you're going to find somebody else that will do the same thing, but ultimately, mm -hmm. in the end, there's just not enough variety when it comes to Mortal Kombat 1 assist. And the the rough the rough part about it cuz it's technically a team game, it's like it's yeah. like a team light game. Team light. Uh, yeah. when you find a cool strategy and it works well in that character, if you try to do the same thing on like other characters, it just doesn't work good. It's like yeah. it's like it works but it just doesn't work nearly as well as the other characters. Like they're clearly way better at this than you. So it's like, all right, so the game just shifts in that direction. The same problem Marvel versus Capcom has had forever where it's like, okay, this is going to go heavily towards the characters that are good at this shit until they find a good balance of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where they found uh Doctor Doom hidden missiles, man. It just works for every character. Works for every character. Yeah. Yep. Um so, let's hope the best for MK1.
And uh, Peacemaker is a lot of fun. I highly recommend if you're if you've been looking for a fun character and you like John Cena at all or Peacemaker, I, I highly recommend you check him out. He's crazy fun. Uh, so talk to me about uh, Ed stuff, Justin. You you're probably the did, did you make the number one Ed in the world, or were you not home to do it? No, I <laughs> I, I I got him to master. But the you thing is, the the new rank system is kind of like weird because literally, like I'll just get put into Diamond Five right away. Oh yeah. Right, like what, <laughs> they know it's you. No, it's just it's just they just sped it up for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, I I got to Ed, um, to master in like I think like eighteen hundred in like the first like few hours. Um, and he was a blast. He was really fun. He's very fun. But then I started fighting like the top tier characters, and I realized where what's he's missing. As a boxer, his jabs don't go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so again, so, it, our early impression was that his close range sucks. That just carries over to like higher level. Yeah, yeah, it just carries over where like you just can't press a button in specific ranges because of like stay and jab whiffs, and then his flickers like it's it's not meant for close range. Yeah. So because there were these are long range pokes or mid like mid range pokes, that means you don't have any options for short range pokes. So there's like this space. Where you just can't press anything and it just won't work. So it's like right before the mid range when you're trying to get out of the mid range, he sucks. Yeah. So it's like, and I and I guess like that makes sense for characters like Dalsum because Dalsum is long range, so he shouldn't have close range pokes. But Dalsum has better close range pokes than than Ed. Yeah. <laughs> Dalsum's close range is not terrible, to be real. It's like, not. He's, it's he, great. He pressures you in pretty decent ways in Street Fighter Six. Yeah. So Ed is just like missing that, and it's just kind of weird because. He has the coolest combos in the game. Like, I agree. Like just because with with his uh, SA two um, and the different ways you could keep the juggle going, especially with his flickers and everything. So he does have a really cool move set. It's just that like when you are just playing in that range and you're just mashing on a button that you like in theory and based off how the game works, it should work, but it just has crap range it has worse range when than aki and aki and that was aki's problem but they fixed that <laughs> with the balance patch yeah they gave, they made her jab crazy right yeah they gave it has more range and everything so you can do combos where it normally misses yeah. so it's like did we not think about that when we released ed because ed literally has the same problem as aki from patch from the beginning of how the funny game. how um, funny i yeah. i took ed in training and it's just funny to hear you guys be like this boxer sucks at close range. <laughs> Capcom announces we worked with a boxer to make him authentic. Like we we talked to a professional boxer. Oh, he looks oh authentic. My God. He's cool. He, his animations do, but like so then that boxer talked to the Capcom designer and sort of like, oh, he's really good up close. And they're like, no, no he's quite not. the opposite, really. So I just find that hilarious. Yeah, Literally it's... everybody says the same thing online. They're like, bro, where are his jabs? Like the mm. jabs just don't work how it's supposed to. He's he's legit like one of the coolest looking characters in the game, but they were trying to make a funky archetype with him. And now we have the third character in Street Fighter DLC that's kind of funky. Where it's like Rashid pretty funky. Like you gotta figure yep. this shit out, dude. Yeah. Uh you're like you're a gotcha kood specific. Let him figure it out over the span of the next year. Uh and then you have Aki, kind of a funky character, like not really traditional, sort of bizarre and weird, even weirder than Fong in several ways. And now we have like a long range boxer, kind of a funky character where their game plan and what you gotta do with them will take a little while to figure out. So I'm really curious about Akuma is what I'm saying is that I'm so, so no, none of these characters are straightforward yet. So Akuma, this is where they're going to pull the trigger and they're going to give him the baby mechanic and he's going to have the baby attached to him. Yeah. And he has to protect it during the, protect protect the, baby. Baby. the baby is the health bar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man, that's just going to be crazy because like, yeah. um, <laughs> I, yeah, I know they're very. They said they're very careful with like how they want to release yeah. Akuma and stuff like that. And I mean, he's technically still part of season one, right? So that so I think they have they can't release season two yet until no. they release Akuma. Uh, but spring's around the corner, right? Yeah, so we yeah, we're probably going to be seeing a trailer in the next month. Yeah, right. Technically, he sh he could come out this month if it's spring, but probably it's not. Maybe maybe like mid April or May. 
so Capcom is having a stream where I think uh, tomorrow for our time this summer, tomorrow. Yeah. they're doing a stream for two games like Dragon's Dogma and something else. And then the 11th or the 12th. So fantastic. Right after we've recorded, but before this episode comes out, they're going to have another live stream day. And they said new content will be shown for Street Fighter 6. Yes. Oh. So no, it's like Capcom the... highlights or something like that. So it's yeah, like, their, it's own, like a... their own direct little yeah. live stream thing so but it can't be a kuma it has to be like a collab or something right? i mean it could be a bunch of things collab or like maybe new patch stuff because this patch is kind of like a baby one yeah. uh to fix slugs. yeah to fix some problems like you know buffs and nerfs yeah um, they so they but... didn't they didn't hold out the entire year that they, they said didn't. they were going to they they eventually mm -hmm. caved and they're like okay so here's some fixes like we're gonna try to we're going to try to make Ryu better. Oh, it didn't work that well. All right. So we're going to have to make Ryu even better <laughs> later on, you know? So it's it's fascinating. This is not season two. This isn't like a, an update of like we're season two. And I, I'm genuinely curious how deep they are going to take a season two of Street Fighter VI mechanically. Because there is going to have to be mechanical changes like drive rush or drive impact. These things are going to have to work differently. Air drive rush. I don't know what the hell they're going to do. I air think drive, gonna, air parry. Uh, yes, I, there, I think we could be going in that direction. There, there could be like That'd big be cool. system changes. I think an air parry does make a lot of sense too. So uh, anyway, it's... We're not there yet. We're going to have to get Akuma first, and then you sit on Akuma, and I wouldn't be surprised that, like, the amount of time we sit on Akuma and just, like, see how his gameplay is, then he's going to change for the future. So I wouldn't... I also wouldn't be shocked if he's mad overtune, and he's, like, he, season two ready, and he's, like, kind of fucking crazy. There was one character. I forgot what was the character, uh, but it was in the Arc System game, I believe, and, yeah, it was... It was, um... Sin. They released Sin, and then literally a month after, they released a huge balance patch, and they said, yeah, no further changes for Sin yet because he has not been developed yet by the community. And, yes. and he actually huh. sucked. He, like, he was sucked. super bad. So, so, like, he literally had to stay sucked for, like, a whole year <laughs> because sucked. of that. Yeah. So Akuma um, possibly could be... It's either he, Akuma's either broken or he's going to be trash or, like, complex, like the first three DLC characters. Um, and there might not be any possible changes to Akuma. So I don't know. I mean, we'll see. the baby mechanic aside, uh, I I mean, just speaking for myself here, but I think you two would agree. It's like, just make him the most simple Shoto ever, make him cool, and that's it. Because it's like, you need this character. This character is kind of important, at least for the... <sighs> I'm not sure for the hardcore of the mainstream. I'm not sure who anymore. Everyone loves like, Akuma. Everyone knows everyone who he is. Everyone loves Akuma. Yeah, and, and everyone Akuma. loves... No, I just mean in terms of gameplay being yeah, accessible yeah, sure, and yeah. fun and not funky is, is what so I mean. What, like, it's important. So here's here's my impression of like where they could go with this. Like Akuma has always had the most options of any Shoto. Like straight yeah. up. Every single game. He has a demon flip that does like potentially six different fucking things. And yeah. they, they already did a lot of that in Street Fighter V. So I think they just have to take that further. I wouldn't be surprised if they make teleport actually good. Right, Again, because teleport right? has mm -hmm. only ever been good in OG Street Fighter games when he's like back to the corner and you immediately recover in when you hit the wall and you can do wild shit from it. I wouldn't be surprised if he can have like a teleport that goes into moves and stuff. So that's where you have to start thinking, where could they evolve Akuma's gameplay? And demon flip stuff could get crazier. Obviously air fireball stuff is really scary to, to make that really good. So I don't know if they that's going to be terrifying if he can throw three fucking projectiles in the air because that has led to problems in the past. I mean, hear me out, right? Like, a lot of some characters have some buffs, some buff, uh, you know, super R2s, right? Like, we have Rashids, uh, Jamie has an install where, he, you know, he gets automatic level four. What sure. if Akuma SA2, he just turns to Shinakuma for during that brief period of time? Oh, that's cool. Right? Or he turns into Oni or some shit. Yeah, like, he, turns, oh, like, he just weird. turns to a completely different character. I'm with you. Right, I think that would be pretty good. Obviously, level three is like the classic, like rage. Like he'll have two level threes: a raging demon and then the ground pound, right? Yeah. And then yeah, the yeah. level one could be like either DP or Tatsu or Fireball Super or like Air Fireball Super. But level two, I think it has to be something different Badass and not install. like yeah, not the general Akuma Super like random Super here and there. It shouldn't be like Go Show Ryu or something lame yeah, like that. Don't yeah, nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. lame. Yeah, give give me a give him an install. Make him a different character. He got white hair and everything, right? So I'm why not? super yeah. down for that, dude. I think that would be freaking awesome. And and give him 
Go ahead. Give him Pandora. Give him Pandora mode. <laughs> yeah, like, Pandora. Crazy. Mode. Yeah, screw it. Just let him kill the uh, let him let him kill the baby, and he gets power. <laughs> right? This is terrifying now. He, he, he's able to ter- make the 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 clock go down to zero. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, and I think last but not least is uh, the recent collab, and I haven't had a chance to check out any of these collaborations in Street Fighter Six to be real. But Mega Man is collaborating with Street Fighter, and there's <laughs> costumes, and they look stupid. <laughs> and, you know, it's uh, you, you you get the emotes and stuff, right? Yeah. They brought back yeah. the Street Fighter Cross Tekken Mega Man, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. There, there's a portrait of that guy somewhere, right? You can get like an avatar portrait or whatever. So right. they did this not too long ago with Final Fight, right? Final they had fight. like the big inflatable Hagar chest. Hagar, Hagar nipples, yeah. Hagar nipples. And like, I want to talk about this for a second because it's really hit me now with Mega Man. In Street Fighter V, I can't believe we're saying this, Street Fighter V, this would be a cool costume yeah. that a character in the roster would be wearing by now. The final fight thing was weird because it was just like a you know a Hagar chest, and you could already kind of do that with your avatar anyway. But here's this unique costume that only your avatars can wear, and it's like we were advertising every fucking Capcom fighting game under the sun in Street Fighter Five. Yeah, everyone there was Rival Schools costumes, there were uh, Power Stone costs, Darkstalkers, and now Jin Sautome was a goddamn Jin. costume. Yeah, that was good. And, but now, since it's all relegated to Avatar stuff, now I'm like, the, the collabs I get, the collab stuff that's outside the range of there's there's things you have yeah, to consider, the other company yeah. that owns the rights. But Capcom owns these, you own this shit. Yeah. You, you know, can give. Ken was in Rathalos armor, brother. <laughs> they must be making a lot of money from these Avatars. They I must don't know. be. That's, they because, have, that's no, the only one. I bet right? you. Everybody wants. No, I bet you they're making negative money, but somehow still. But it's every. Know, make... It's like every month. It's just like boom, Avatar, Avatar, Avatar. Right? It makes so you. Just... It almost makes you realize how. And the Street Fighter Five costumes are relatively affordable as well, from what I remember. Um, yeah. It makes you realize how much Street Fighter Five did its custom or its its costumes for characters, in actually a pretty good way that helped the game out, because you know putting a. Morrigan skin on Chun Li or something like that, or right, or just a weird crossover. It was Guts Man got yeah. put over uh, Boxer Balrog. It was it was on Balrog, Balrog. and yeah. Air Man was on Rashid. It's like this is brilliant, dude. That this was is good. Yeah, it was really great. cool. I almost wish Street Fighter Six had that stuff, but it's obvious that Street Fighter Six is like approaching things differently. They're going for your avatar customization shit, obviously. But if there's something about Street Fighter V that I miss, it's those collaboration costumes for the characters. And we we just got, not just, but like, we we, we only thing we have is a custom two, uh, costume three, sorry, for yeah, custom three. the whole yeah. roster. And it's like, damn, man, I feel like there's a missed opportunity here that could potentially monetize even more. And maybe, costume, yeah. Sorry, you go ahead, Justin. I was like, maybe season two will, will change that. I um, hope so. Maybe. Yeah, hope so. I was going to say, and even then, Costume 3, I feel like people bullied Capcom into releasing that. Practically, they didn't yeah. didn't plan to. <laughs> and I, they still <laughs> fucked it up in, in yeah. some way. And, and they still charged you too much because of the stupid currency. But I will pay a little bit. Let me turn Cammy into... Uh, Felicia or yeah. QB or or Tiffany, just put Tiffany in a game. <laughs> Please, don't worry, don't worry. You'll you'll get your rival schools fighting pass coming soon. Yeah. Oh, that's what it's gonna be. So you're gonna yeah, you're gonna sick you the weird booby armor on yeah, on weird just booby your, armor. your avatar freak goblin. Congratulations, Matthew. This is what you wanted, right? I hate this podcast. <laughs>